let's solve a problem. We're going to use the old way and now the new way to solve this problem. And hopefully you'll see that one way is easier than the other way. So, here's the problem. I've got a block, a block on a ramp. We love those problems, don't we? They're like our favorite problems. So we got a block on a ramp. Slides down this ramp at in whatever angle it is. If the block starts at a height of h above the floor, what is the velocity of the block when it reaches the base of the ramp? So let's solve this problem. There it goes. It reaches some speed at the end. Woohoo, right? Okay. Solve this in two ways: using Newton's second law and using conservation of energy. We'll solve it both ways, and we'll see which way is the easier way. So here's my block on a ramp, part way down. What are the things I need to do? Well, put my x, y axis there, right? Now what do I need to do? Draw a free body diagram, right? So what are the forces acting on that block? So I have Gravity, mg. I have the normal force. It's a frictionless ramp. That's it, right? Okay, what do I do when I solve a problem? This is x, this is y. I have no friction. What am I asked to find? Velocity at the bottom of the ramp. Well, what's the initial velocity up here? Zero. What are the variables that go with all this? Delta x, right? How far does it go? Time, a. What's acceleration? Is it going to be 9.8? No, it's going to be some fraction of 9.8. What is the fraction of 9.8? We have to calculate that. Okay, and then we have our Final velocity is also unknown. Lots of unknowns. Okay. What am I going to solve first? What am I going to need to find? Of these unknowns, I need to find A. How am I going to find A? Sum all the forces in the X, set them equal to ma in the x direction, right? Am I going to need to worry about the y direction for this problem? No, I have no friction, so I don't need to worry about it. I can just deal in x. Okay, what are the forces acting in the x direction? Well, I need to figure out what component. I need to get this into its components, right? So I know this angle is theta. I'm looking for the component of gravity that is parallel to the ramp. So this is the opposite side. So what's it going to be? So Katoa sine is opposite. So this component is mg sine theta. Okay. <clears throat> Any other forces acting in the x direction? No, right? So mg Sine theta equals max. <coughs> Excuse me. What do I see go away? Mass, therefore the acceleration is g sine theta. Hey, so now I know what a is. G sine theta. I still have t and delta x unknown to me. What am I going to even do here with this, with this a? I need to use A to find the final velocity, so I'm going to use some equation, right? One of those original equations. I can use, one of them is V final equals V initial plus AT. The other one is V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2A delta X. Either one of them, I either have to find delta X or I have to find time. Which one do I have the ability to find? And which one is much harder to find? Time or delta x? Which one's easier? 
I'm not saying they're easy. I said easier. <laughs> Time's actually the harder one to find in this problem. Delta X is the easier one to find. Because what do I know? What, what is delta X here? Delta X is this distance here. Right? Does that even show up? That's delta X. It's a triangle. What is delta X? It's the hypotenuse. Delta X equals the hypotenuse. How do I find the length of that hypotenuse? I know H and I know an angle. I'm going to use sine, right? Sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. So H over whatever my delta X is, right? Delta X is going to be H divided by sine theta. So now I know delta X. And I'm going to use this equation here. So V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2A delta X. Let's plug it in. This is nicely zero, which makes it nice. So V final squared equals what? 2 times A, which is G sine theta, multiplied by delta X, which is H divided by sine theta. Look at that. It goes away nicely. Sine theta, I don't even have to do any numbers. I get 2GH equals V final squared. Square root that. And I get 2GH square rooted. That's the final velocity. Now, it's a whole lot easier watching me solve this problem, right? But would have that been an easy problem for you to solve? Many of you would have struggled with that one. It would have taken quite a while to solve it. Some of you could have rattled it off very quickly. But it's still, even if you could do it quickly, it's not the easiest way to solve it. So let's use energy. Let's use conservation of energy. So energy initial equals energy final. What's its initial energy state right here? Energy initial equals what? MGY, MG, we're going to use MGH because it's up a height. Is there any kinetic energy? There's no kinetic energy. So it's going to be MGH. Use capital. Down here, when the block is to here, what's its final energy state? So energy final is going to be what? Kinetic potential what? It's all kinetic, right? Because it cannot get any lower. It's taken all the potential, turned it all into kinetic energy. It's all kinetic energy at the bottom. So that's just going to be 1 half mv final squared. There's no potential energy left. It's, it's got down as far as it can go. So that's going to equal 1 half mg final squared. M goes away nicely for me. Solve that equation for V final. V final is going to be 2GH all square rooted. The exact same answer, but about 15 steps less, right? Even if you know how to solve the other way, this is still clearly the easier path to solving. If the question asks you delta x, then you would just solve it the same way you did before. Yeah, if, if I'm just using delta, if it's just finding delta x, then it's just a triangle at that point in time. Okay, did this give me, it gives me the exact same number. Much, much easier path. So anytime you're solving problems now, Think about conservation of energy. It is the easier way to solve most problems, right? This is the stop, look, and think. We can do the hard way because that's the way we know. That's the way we've always done it. 
or we can do the easy way and think for a little bit longer and then have the answer. So your first thought should be, can I solve this problem using conservation of energy? Yes, then go that way route because it is so much easier. Thank you. One half mv final squared. All right. Questions? As long as we're not dealing with friction, we don't have to worry about it. Even when we're dealing with friction, we don't have to worry about it. We can do, we can use this, these tools to ourselves even with friction. We'll show that on Monday. We'll actually solve a couple problems around that idea.